video I'm going to show you some different types of function questions. These are the functions that we've been given. f of x which is equal to 1 minus 2x, g of x which is equal to x cubed divided by 10 and lastly h of x which is equal to 12 divided by x. So for the first few questions we're just going to be using a method called substitution. And for the first one we have to work out f of 3. So if you compare this with the function f of x you can see the letter x has changed to the number 3. Okay, so what you need to do is substitute that number 3 into this function. Okay, so you replace the letter x with the number 3. So instead of writing 1 minus 2x down again, I'm going to write 1 minus 2 brackets 3. Okay, so you can see I've just swapped the 3 in here in place of the x. So now we can calculate this. 1 minus 2 multiplied by 3 is 1 minus 6, which is negative 5. Okay, so that's the first one done. Okay? For the next one, we have to use the function f of x again, because it says the letter f. And this time, we have to work out f of negative 2. So this time, we have to change the letter x to the number negative 2, okay, instead of 3. So just like before, you write out the function, except when you get to the letter x, you just write brackets, and then you fill in with the new number, negative 2. Okay, so 1 take away 2 multiplied by negative 2 is the same as 1 plus 4, because negative 2 times negative 2 turns into a positive, so 1 plus 4 is 5. Okay, so that's the second one. Next, we have g of 2. Okay, so the letters changed to a g, so now we're using the function g of x. So it's the same idea, except we're just going to use this function instead, and we have to change the letter x to positive 2. Okay, so instead of writing x cubed over 10, we write 2 cubed over 10. So you're just replacing the letter x with the number each time, okay? So 2 cubed is 2 multiplied 2 multiplied by 2, which is 8. And 8 over 10 is a fraction which we can simplify because they have a common factor of 2. So if I divide both of these numbers by 2, I get 4 fifths. Okay? For the next one, we have to work out g of negative 3. So we're using the same function, g of x, but this time we have to change the letter x to negative 3. So instead of writing x cubed over 10, we have negative 3 cubed over 10. So negative 3 cubed is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, which is negative 27. Okay? And then if we divide that by 10, well, this time we can't simplify the fraction because there's no common factor between these numbers. So we can just leave it like that, or you can write it as a decimal, negative 2.7, either answer is fine. Okay, over here. Now we have to work out h of 4. So the letter has changed again. So this time we're using the last function, h of x, and just like in all the other examples, you're just switching the letter x to whichever number has been given here in the brackets. So instead of writing 12 divided by x, this time we have 12 divided by 4. Okay, and 12 divided by 4 is just 3. For the next one, instead of writing 12 divided by x, we've got 12 divided by negative 3. And if we work that out, we get negative 4. And for the last one, it's a little bit more difficult because it's a fraction, but it's exactly the same idea. Just replace the letter x with that number. Okay, so instead of writing 12 divided by x, we have 12 divided by a half. And so if we divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying and switching the second fraction upside down. Okay, so if we work that out, we get 24. If you're not sure about uh, multiplying, dividing with fractions, go and watch my other lesson um, on that and that will seem a bit easier. I'm just going to show you two more substitution questions before we move on to the next type of function question. So here we have to work out f of x squared. So this time we don't have a number, we have x squared. 
but it's exactly the same method that I just showed you before, substitution. You just replace the letter x with x squared. So when you write out 1 minus 2x, it becomes 1 minus 2x squared. Okay, and that's the final answer. We can't simplify this. That's it, okay? For the next one, h of x plus 1. Okay, so we're using the function h of x, this one here. And likewise, when you write out 12 over x, the x just changes to what's inside the brackets here, x plus 1. And that's it. Okay, so here's the next type of function question. It's a type of question where you're expected to solve an equation, okay? So if you're not very confident at solving equations, it's a good idea to go and practice that and work on your algebra, and then functions will be a lot easier. So for the first one, it says find x if f of x is equal to 11. Okay, so f of x is the same function as earlier, one minus two x, is now equal to the number 11. So you need to write that down, okay? Instead of writing f of x, we're going to write down what f of x actually is, one minus two x, and you put it equal to the number 11, and now we have to find x. So we're just solving this equation to work out x. So to solve this equation, I'm going to subtract one on both sides so that I have minus two x equals 10. And then if I divide both sides by negative two, I get x is equal to negative five. Okay, so that's the first one. On to g of x. It says g of x is equal to 0 0.8 and the function g of x is here, x cubed over 10. So I'm going to put that x cubed over 10, over 10 equal to 0 0.8. Okay, that's what the question is telling us to do. It's saying put the function g of x equal to this number, so that's what I'm doing. And then, again, we're just solving the equation. So to solve this equation, I want to get rid of this fraction. I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. So when I do that, I get x cubed equals and then to find x, I need to cube root both sides. Okay, so if I cube root the left hand side, I get x. And if I cube root the right hand side, I get 2. Okay, so there's the second one. On to h of x. I thought my camera was going to fly away. <laughs> Alright, so this time we have to put the function h of x equal to negative 6. So here's the function h of x, 12 over x, and I just need to put that equal to the number negative six, and again, solve the equation. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by x, so that I have 12 equals negative six x, and then if I divide both sides of the equation by negative six, that gives me 12 divided by negative six, which is negative two. Okay, so there's the last one. Okay, next I'm going to show you something called composite functions. So watch out with these questions. I've changed the functions. Now f of x is equal to four x, g of x is equal to x plus five, and h of x is equal to x squared. So for the first one, we have to calculate or evaluate f g of x. So what you need to do is put the function g of x into the function f of x. I always say to my students, work back to front, okay? So start by writing down the function g of x. I leave a little space here in front. So if we look at the function g of x, it's equal to x plus five. So start by writing that down. Then you need to look at the function f of x and see what's happening to the letter x in that function. So you can see, that the letter x is being multiplied by four. So you need to multiply this by four. This becomes the x which was originally in the f of x. Okay, so if we put a four here, just make sure you put brackets around this because remember, you're multiplying all of it by four. This is your new x, okay? So you're switching the x to this, okay? So write down function g of x, look to see what's happening to the x and multiply by four. So you can either leave it like that or if you want to expand the brackets, it becomes four x plus 20. 
So for the next one, we have to do it the other way around. We have to find g f of x. So this time, we need to start by writing down the function f of x, okay, which is 4x. So write that down first. Then we need to look to see what's happening to the x in g of x. So here we can see we've got x and then we're adding 5. This is our new x, okay? So all we need to do is add 5, okay? You're just switching your function f, here, 4x, into the x, okay? You are placing the x with that function, okay? So that's the second one. Next we've got h, f of x. So again, you need to write down the function f of x first, okay? Remember you're working back to front. So f of x is equal to 4x again. And if we look at the function h of x, x is being squared, okay? Remember, this is like our new x. So we have to square all of this. So because we're squaring all of it, make sure you put it in brackets because you need to square the 4 as well as the x squared. So 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16, and x squared is just x squared, okay? So that's the answer to that one. This time we've got three functions to deal with. So just like in the other ones, start with the one that's written last, so f of x. So f of x is 4x, so write that down first. Then look at the function h of x. So h of x is here, and we have to square x. So you have to square this, okay? It's like the last question. Then if we look at the function g of x, we have to add 5 to the x, okay? This is our new x, remember? So you need to add 5. And then if you simplify that, well, this is like the previous question. 4x all squared is 16x squared. Not forgetting to add 5. questions is a mixture of the examples I showed you at the start of the video and also the composite functions that I just showed you. So there is more than one way of doing this question. You could use the idea that I just showed you and then substitute this number into the expression that you found. Although I usually teach my students to do it a different way so I'm going to show you that now. Remember just now I said you need to work back to front and you need to write down this function first. Well, here we've got g of 4, so I'm going to start by working out g of 4 first, okay? So just like at the beginning of the video, I'm going to substitute the number 4 into the function g of x, okay, which is here. So instead of writing x plus 5, I've got 4 plus 5, which is 9. Then what you need to do is substitute that number 9 into the function f. So you're working out f of 9. So the function f of x is 4. Okay. So you need to multiply 4 by 9 and that gives you 36. Okay, and that's the final answer. For the next one, if I use the same method, first I need to work out h of negative 3. So if I look at the function h of x here, it's x squared. So I need to work out negative 3 squared. Now make sure you put brackets around that number if you're using a calculator, because when you square a negative number, it becomes positive, okay? Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. If you forget to use the brackets, the calculator will give you negative 9, which is incorrect, okay? So that's h of negative 3. Then we need to substitute that number into the function g of x, okay? This one here. So we're working out g of 9. All right, it's just a coincidence that it's 9 here and 9 here, okay? So if I replace x with 9 in this function, instead of writing x plus 5, I now have 9 plus 5, which gives me 14. And that's the answer to this one. This time, we have to work out g, g, g of 10. So we have to work out g of 10. So if we work out g of 10 to start with, instead of writing x plus 5,
five, we've got 10 plus five, which is 15. Next, you need to work out G of 15. So instead of writing X plus five, we've now got 15 plus five, which is 20. And then you need to do it a third time. So we need to work out G of 20. You need to substitute this number back into the function G again. Okay, so G of 20. So instead of X plus five, we've got 20. Okay, so to finish, I'm going to show you how to find the inverse of a function. So here we've been given a function which is f of x equals 5x take away 2. What you need to do when finding the inverse is start by writing down this letter and then an equal sign. So x equals. Then what you need to do is write down the function but change this x to a different letter. Okay, any letter other than x. So I'm going to write 5y minus 2 instead. Next, what you have to do is rearrange this equation to make y the subject of the formula. So that just means rearrange the equation to get y equals. So to do that, I need to add 2 to both sides. So I have x plus 2 equals 5y. And then I need to divide both sides by 5. So that gives me x plus 2 divided by 5 equals y. So I have rearranged the equation to make y the subject and this is the inverse okay, of the function f of x. So we've done it, that's the answer. So the reason I put x equals at the beginning is so that my answer is in terms of x. Okay, So that's, that's finished. So I'm going to use the same method for this one. So we've got j of x equals 12 minus 5x all divided by 3. So again, start by writing down x equals, then rewrite your function, but change this letter x to a different letter, for example y, and then rearrange this equation to make y the subject of the formula. So start by multiplying both sides by 3, so you have 3x equals 12 minus 5y, then you can minus 12 on both sides. So 3x take away 12 equals negative 5y. And then divide both sides of the equation by negative 5. So 3x minus 12, all divided by negative 5 equals y. So this is our answer. Although usually we don't like to leave a denominator as a negative number. So what you can do just to tidy this up and write it in its best form, okay, if you like, what you need to do is change the sign of all of these terms. So let's change that denominator to a positive. This positive 3x changes to a negative. And this negative 12 changes to a positive. Okay. So if you rewrite it like that, it's the same thing, but this is the better version. Okay. Now for the last one, m of x. We have 4x plus 1 divided by 7. So just like before, start by writing down x equals. Rewrite your function but change the letter x to another letter, for example y. And then make y the subject of the formula. So start by multiplying by 7 on both sides. So 7x equals 4y plus 1. Then take away 1 on both sides. So 7x take away 1 equals 4y. And then the last step, divide both sides of your equation by 4. So 7x minus 1 over 4 equals y. So that is the inverse of the function. I hope you found those examples on functions easy to understand. Soon I'll have another video coming with functions in exam questions, okay? So it will be a little bit more difficult, but it will be using those methods that I've shown you today.